Good evening. May I have your attention, please? I'd like to welcome everybody tonight to the College of Complexes. My name is Tim. I'd like to welcome everybody here tonight. The College of Complexes consists of the following format. First, we will have a brief announcements period. Second, we will have a presenter who will speak. Then we will have our question and answer period. And then our infamous rebuttal period where you're able to comment on or off topic, which you generally get about four minutes. So let's have a warm, rousing welcome for Ted Aranda. Democrats just wanted to doctrinate those kids against them. Okay, uh, thanks uh, for that announcement because it's actually very important what's going on in the world, in this country. Uh, Parkland was a, uh, a hoax, a false flag hoax, uh, and this march for our lives is being appropriated by certain people, being organized by people, not the kids. So we have to get down to the lies, the, the humongous lies, and of course, uh, the moon landing is one of the biggest of all time. He also mentioned that we, we might literally be going into World War III. Over what? Uh, this Russiagate lie. This total idiocy, uh, bogus uh, business about Russia uh, hacking our elections and all that crap. Okay. <coughs> so we have to get down to the, the, the bottom of things. So this is, uh, as many of you know, my second presentation on the Apollo landing hoax. And I have so much evidence that I'm not even going to be able to cover it all in this presentation, in the second presentation. Um, but I'll do the best I can, so I'll just um, get right, right into it without further ado. <clears throat> so, um, the Apollo moon landings were without question fake. Criminal deceptions by the government of this magnitude are utterly unacceptable, to say the least and the American people must respond to them appropriately. This requires uh, that we know with certainty what's going on with these events, what our rulers are doing. And we can know this by examining the evidence carefully, objectively, and scientifically. <clears throat> get away from the screen a little bit. Okay, so um, I'll take, you know, just get right back into the evidence from uh, where I left off last time. Uh, let's consider the, the fact that the moon is sitting in a vacuum. And I'm going to start uh, with this video here of a car on Earth. And I want to make a point about this method of mine. Um, the moon is a vastly distant alien place, totally inaccessible to non-astronauts. The perfect place about which to concoct a fairy tale. To test NASA's story, we have to start not with the material they provide us, but with our own uh, known Earth experience, as well as with uh, what we already know about the moon from solid astronomical knowledge independent of Apollo. One of the main reasons they were able to get away with this uh, um, fiction is that we can go to the moon to check them, right? It was literally the perfect place to, to uh, pull off a, a bogus thumb. Okay, so uh, this car, um, this video I found on the, on the internet, <clears throat> has this car, four-wheel drive, it's actually a Subaru, and it's shooting rocks straight out from under the uh, wheel or tire, like so, okay? And these rocks are going in a shallow arc all the way across like that and straight out. Um, and since it's a four-wheel drive, the, uh, the back tires are doing the same thing with the rocks. Uh, the rocks generally don't uh, rise higher than uh, the tire, as you can see, okay? They do not, those rocks uh, do not end up way up here. <clears throat> Just a, a few stray ones uh, because they collide with each other, okay? But otherwise, the uh, rocks are going in a shallow arc straight out in a symmetrical arc. And uh, it's an arc similar to this bottom one here. And that's a, a ballistic trajectory. It's a parabolic arc. And all of these are parabolic arcs. And that's the uh, uh, trajectory, the path that objects follow when they're shot uh, uh, or propelled in, uh, when, and when you don't have to take into account air resistance. <clears throat> Those rocks were heavy enough that uh, they don't have to, you do, you don't, we don't have to take into account air resistance to follow in their path uh, and find it, find it to be a parabola. Uh, the quintessential example is a cannonball uh, shot out of a cannon 
um, it's so heavy that um, to trace its path, you don't have to take into account air resistance. Okay, a parabola, just like that. Uh, depending on you know the height, the height changes, but the shape is the same. <clears throat> Let's look at this uh, dune buggy on the beach uh, and see what happens when it starts spinning its tires. It produces a, a, a rooster tail. That's what that's called. That's what these, you know, these guys that do this on the beach, that's what they call it, a rooster tail. And this is not tracing a parabolic arc. It's not tracing a symmetrical arc. And it's not, look, these sand grains are not being shot straight out. Okay? They bunch up here, but since they have uh, energy, they, they move up, not out. And why don't they move out? Because they're surrounded by air. They might as well be in a fluid, a liquid. Okay? To us, uh, you know, us flapping our hands or we're doing whatever we do, uh, we're, we're, you know, we're, we're kind of like, uh, to us, in a, in a vacuum. Uh, there's air, but uh, we don't feel the effects of it very much. Uh, same thing with the cannonball. But the sand uh, particles, uh, air is very heavy, so they're very much affected by it in, in their path when they're, when they're propelled. Um, okay, so that's what happens to, uh, to sand, sand grains. They do not follow the parabolic arcs uh, when they're shot, uh, ballistic trajectories when they're shot out like that. And uh, the same, same dune buggy, uh, as you can see, as it moves, <clears throat> it actually produces many rooster tails. Those are uh, roughly vertical columns of sand. And those, those columns are sta pretty much stationary. Nothing is moving back uh, you know, in the way that those rocks did, straight out. And here we see another example. As soon as this tire starts spinning, it, uh, the sand particles run into a wall of air because uh, thick air, for, which for them, thick air is surrounding the tire all around. So uh, they're not going anywhere, and they bunch up and produce a classic rooster tail. Is it going backwards then? What's going backwards? The, the, the sand dune? Sand? The sand particles? Or the car? No, the car's going forward. This car, this car is shooting to the right, okay? Uh, and as it, as it moves, it leaves um, various rooster tails. Um, okay, so let's, uh, okay, one more example. This motorcyclist uh, is, is uh, leaving classic rooster tails, uh, vertical columns of, of, uh, and multiple columns of sand, as you can see, and those, those, the sand dis uh, dissipates um, in the air, suspended in air, and then it falls, just like the, the, the columns fall straight down, the sand falls more or less straight down, all right? <clears throat> These are uh, trajectories with linear air resistance. They're not uh, symmetrical parabolic arcs like this. Here's a dune buggy on the moon. This is uh, Apollo 16. And they raced around on, on the moon on, on you know, probably other missions too, but they made a big deal out of it here. And we're going to watch what happens here. Here goes the dune buggy. It shoots up air, uh, the, the sand particles, in a rooster tail a classic rooster tail, a column of, 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 of sand stopped by what? By air. They were not on the moon. They, they was, the, 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 the sand uh, particles were stopped by air. They were not shot straight out like the rocks or like sand particles would on the moon in a vacuum. There would be nothing, there was, they were they kind of no resistance. And then um, the uh, column uh, dissipates and falls straight, pretty much straight down. Classic rooster tail on Earth. Um, here you can see the, the uh, little arc, just like we saw with the sec that second dune buggy. And then classic rooster tail, it fall, falls straight down. Okay. Here you see the, the, the multiple columns of uh, sand. All right? Uh, just like the, um, on, the, on the Earth. And a classic large uh, rooster tail, just like we saw in, in that first uh, uh, photo uh, photograph, or still from that uh, video. These guys were not uh, in uh, a vacuum. They were in uh, on a planet with an atmosphere. If they weren't on Earth, they were on some other planet. It's not the moon. They were obviously on Earth. Okay, uh, moving on to gravity. <clears throat> the, the moon is much smaller than the Earth. A lot of people probably don't realize how much smaller the moon is because we see it, you know, big in the sky. It's uh, so much smaller in, in mass that it, it only has one-sixth Earth's gravity. Uh, now, f going back, we start on Earth with what we know. People on Earth can jump a foot or a foot and a half easily. You know, fit, especially fit young people and the astronauts were all fit young people. 
In fact, the average uh, jump for a, a man on Earth is uh, a foot and a half. And uh, elite athletes can jump uh, over three feet. All right? Three feet. Uh, so what would a, a what, let's say this guy weighs 180 pounds and he's obviously fit, how, how high would he jump on the moon? All right, if he could jump a foot and a half on Earth. He would weigh what a, an average uh, five-year-old boy weighs, 30 pounds. So he, here's a strong 180-pound uh, man carrying only uh, 30 pounds, not 180 pounds on the moon, all right? So uh, how high would this astronaut jump? Uh, on, in, in 160 Earth gravity. Well, he has a heavy backpack. That pack, backpack weighs about 120 pounds. Add that to, let's say he weighs 180, so he's carrying 300 pounds. Okay, uh, but one sixth of that is 50 pounds. So he's carrying what an average seven-year-old boy uh, weighs, all right? Uh, so uh, 300, uh, um, so, so you actually, he, this is how high he, he would jump. Um, um, if you were in zero gravity. Okay, 300 uh, divided by 50 is, um, uh, no, 100 divided by 50 is, is roughly uh, 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 one quarter. Okay, he would, he would jump four times as high, okay, uh, on, the, on the moon as he does on Earth, and four times one and a half is about six feet. Okay, am I making sense? I got a little bit uh, messed up with the math there. But he, that's what he would, we would expect him to jump, okay? Uh, but this is an anime, this is a, a um, just an illustration. This isn't the act, what, it, what he actually jumped. This is how high he jumped. I'm going to go through the the, uh, the stills on the video. That's how high he jumped. Okay. He jumped an average height uh, and for the Earth. Okay, a foot and a half. I, I measured that distance, and other people have measured that distance. He jumped a foot and a half. He was not on the moon. All right, and he, he probably wouldn't carry anything in that backpack either. He jumped an average jump. Now, uh, we see uh, that these astronauts don't get very high off the, the ground, and, they're, and, they're, and their strides don't go very far um, in, in walking as well. And they do this little walking, hopping sort of thing. They try to make it look weird, because they have to make it look weird. They couldn't make it look just like on Earth. But uh, they don't. their strides don't go far farther or higher than they would on Earth. But they are going slower. Okay, so we, uh, this guy, um, Gerard Wisniewski, explains what's going on. With less gravity on the moon, the strides would above all gain in height and length, and they do not. The strides are slower without becoming higher or longer. This would suggest that the photos were shown in slow motion. When speeded up, they immediately begin to look natural, in other words, earthly. Okay, so th this is what uh, the investigators have done. They've speeded up the, the film from um, the moon landings, uh, you know, these guys running and jumping and walking on the moon. And what they found is that their motions are perfectly earth-like, perfectly normal, all right? You just uh, 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 speed up the film twice uh, as fast, and the jumps are straight up and down. Uh, their running is, is perfectly normal, all right? In other words, they weren't on the moon. Because if they were on the moon, they would have been bounding, yeah. okay, six, six times, or at least four times yeah. higher, four it's times longer. They've just slowed down, and when you speed it up, um, they, uh, it becomes perfectly normal. If they, had, if, they had been, if they had been on the moon and they were bounding so high and you speed it up, it would have looked even more super, Superman-like, right? That's not what happened. So slow motion was the key. It gave the astronauts' movements a bouncy, floaty feel. That was the key to the illusion. Because they, they looked like they were defying gravity because it, when you slow things down, you know, no matter, even if they're not going very high or far, they look, they look like they were defying gravity. They weren't. They were not uh, on the moon. All indications were that they were in simply Earth gravity. Okay, radiation. <clears throat> this has been called uh, the, uh, serious showstopper. Okay, um, these are auroras uh, on Earth, and they're very beautiful. Has anybody seen uh, an aurora, a good aurora display, maybe up north in Wisconsin? Or, okay, they're real fantastic. They look as fantastic as you see here. And <clears throat> what that is is radioactive particles coming from the sun and hitting our atmosphere, uh, especially in the poles. Uh, polar regions, okay? Sometimes they get farther down, but they're mostly in the poles. So radiation in space is perfectly uh, well known. It, it's, it's a fact. It is not a theory in the least, okay? 
And there are various kinds of radiation I'm only going to deal with one. That's solar energy particles, or uh, uh, what is the other term? Solar particle events, all right? And that's when um, uh, large numbers of um, particles are sh uh, uh, blown out of the sun in these magnetic storms. Okay, this is only the gas. You can't see the particles. But that's during the solar maxima, when there's a lot of sunspots on, on the sun. Okay. Um, now, our Earth, uh, our, the Earth has a magnetosphere, a magnetic field, that protects us from that radiation coming from the sun. Okay. We literally are surrounded by a um, force field, all right, that protects us from the radiation from the sun. In addition to our atmosphere, our atmosphere is the second uh, layer of protection. So now these are the uh, solar maxima, the, the solar cycle, it's an 11 year cycle. And one of those solar maxima was smack when the um, astronauts uh, supposedly went in Apollo, in, in the Apollo program, at the end of the uh, 1960s, 68, 69. Okay, so they would have been subjected <coughs> to thousands, okay, this is, these are the years here, to thousands, many thousands of solar flares, okay? And um, the average is about 150 that, that each mission would have uh, encountered. And now there's variation in the intensity of solar flares, but uh, in each, several of them in each mission would have been deadly. At a minimum, it would have been uh, debilitating. It would have given them some debilitating um, radiation sickness. <clears throat> John Malden, okay, writes in this book, Interstellar Travel. This other author writes in this book, Hazards of Space Travel. Look at these dates, 1992 to 2007, long after Apollo. It's still a problem, okay? Cosmic particles are dangerous and require at least two meters of solid shielding all around, uh, around all living organisms. You can't carry, you can't lift a spaceship up into the, uh, out of the Earth's orbit, out of Earth's gravity with two meters. I can't even put my arms that wide. Two meters of, of shielding of, of solid material, it's impossible and with our technology, and with 1960s technology. Solar flares can give doses of hundreds to thousands of rem over a few hours. Such doses are fatal and millions of times greater than the permitted dose. You will face much, much, this guy says, you will face much, much more radiation in space than you do on Earth. Galactic cosmic rays will continually bombard your body and cause cellular damage. Solar energy particles cause serious illness and death. Uh, Van Allen Van Allen Belt particles cause irreparable damage to living tissue. No reasonable quantity of known material will stop all these rays. These are physicists. These are mainstream physicists. This guy is a NASA consultant, okay? And they're writing long after Apollo. Um, <clears throat> radiation uh, of the kind that the astronauts would have encountered would uh, cause all kinds of uh, serious, uh, very, very serious uh, um, health risks or health problems like cancer, um, damage to the circulatory system, um, genetic mutations, and many others. This isn't even an exhaustive list. And yet, these 12 astronauts were supposed to have walked on the moon, taken uh, a, a couple weeks or whatever, the, I mean, it was many days, three days going, three days coming, sometimes three days there, at least a week, okay, uh, on the moon. There were 12 others that made the trip but didn't land, all right? We're talking about 24 astronauts. All of them, almost all of them, have been living, have lived into the 80s. So a couple of them in the 90s, or 90s, and more than half of them are still alive, and they're still uh, you know, pushing this average higher and higher. These guys, not only did they suffer no uh, radiation illness during the missions or shortly after, they're, they're living um, perfectly normal, healthy lives without any effects of radiation illness, of radiation, any radiation effects, in other words. Human beings have not gone outside of our protective bubble. If we did, we would be toast with our technology. We don't have the technology to do that. They didn't go to the moon. All right, we're going to look at the, um, the surface of the moon because the, uh, the photographs from, um, the, uh, from Apollo are totally fake, okay, and we can prove that. And I'll, do, I'll be proving that over, over the next, most of the ne uh, rest of this uh, presentation. Okay, this is a... Um, meteor shower on Earth, and um, meteors, uh, the, the Earth hits uh, a lot of meteors when it uh, intersects with comets, or the orbits of comets, okay? Um, it, there's a bunch of debris in those paths, all right? 
because of the effects of the sun, of the heat and, and, and melting and, and then, and then uh, and, um, radiation and um, gravity, etc. Now, this, this, I like this illustration because it shows you know, the vast number of, of particles that the Earth runs into, but they're not just dust, okay? They could be, uh, many of them are uh, much larger than dust. In fact, um, the average is like a pea size, and they can get bigger than that. And there are um, 12 major showers and a couple dozen minor showers. And you can add up all those, all those uh, meteorites that hit the Earth, and they would be hitting the moon as well. Okay? Now, the same number would not be hitting the Earth uh, and the moon because the Earth and the moon is smaller. But the figures that I'm giving you are vast underestimates. So we can, we can more or less take these figures for the moon as well. And we're only looking for a ballpark figure. We're not looking for exactitude here, OK? So um, you add up uh, all those shower meteors, meteorites, 67,000, and then there's sporadic background meteorites, regardless of the, of the showers, OK? 24 hours a day, we're being bombarded by, um, by um, meteorites. So that's roughly 100,000. And you, now we take the life of the moon to be about 4 billion. I'll explain that in a second, in, in a few minutes. Um, and we want to know how many meteorites have hit the moon because they just sit there on the moon. Well, you know, they, they disappear eventually on Earth. We, we don't even get hit that, that, that badly for reasons that I'll get into in a second. Uh, but on the moon, all of those meteorites would leave, leave craters and, and jumbled you know, material and, and scars. Okay? And you just add them all up. It's simple math. Um, arithmetic, and you get 445 quadrillion meteors hitting the moon over 4 billion years. This is the surface of the moon, the, the, uh, um, the area of the moon. You just divide uh, this figure with, by that one, and you get 12 meteor strikes per square meter. Okay. Now, I said that uh, most of those particles are you know, the size of a small pebble, but uh, some of them are larger. You get baseball size, softball size, and each of those would uh, leave a, cr a crater about a meter wide because you, uh, you take the ratio of 1 to 10. The size of the meteorite, um, the crater is 10 times as large. So the point here is that the moon has been completely bombarded. I mean, every square meter of the moon has been hit by numerous meteorites. It is a jumble of, of, of a, a chaotic jumble of, of uh, craters and and other debris that I'll explain in a second here. But we're not finished by any means. Because we haven't taken into account the, the larger objects, bolides, <clears throat> which are a small um, asteroid that hit um, the Earth and the Moon. This is one that hit Russia uh, just a few years ago, um, but it, it was mostly destroyed in the atmosphere, so that's why you didn't hear about it. That's why you, know, you didn't hear about some city being destroyed. Um, it was mainly destroyed in the atmosphere, and that's what happens to most bolides. In fact, almost all of them. Our Earth protects us from these things. But we're talking about objects one meter to 20 meters in diameter, okay? Uh, when those hit uh, an object like the moon, we're talking about craters 10 meters to 200 meters in diameter. And there are even larger ones occasionally. So you, if you take the num those num that number of strikes in this study over a 20-year period, <clears throat> you get 556. You add that um, over 4 billion years, and you get 110 billion uh, bolide strikes on the moon. You divide that by the area of the moon, and you get uh, 2,900 strikes per square kilometer. Now we're talking major craters. You know, we're not talking about you know, craters like a foot or a few feet. We're talking uh, craters on an average about 40 meters. If you take the average impact there as 4 meters, which is conservative, 40 meter craters. Okay, 2,900 of them per square kilometer. Um, and you take the area, you find, so you find the area of such a crater, and you multiply that by 2,900, you get this figure, 3,600, 3, excuse me, 3,600,000 square meters. A square kilometer is only 1 million square meters, because we're talking about 2,900 strikes per square kilometer. So what does this mean? You have 3.6 square kilometers of, a, of crater area. If you add up all those craters, you have 3.6 square kilometers per one square kilometer of the moon's surface. In other words, the moon is totally covered by craters. In fact, they're overlapping each other. Craters hitting, uh, objects hitting craters that are already there. You don't have a plain, uh, 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 what is it, um, faultless uh, you know, sur uh, area on the moon, okay? Uh, a smooth surface on the moon, period. And I'm gonna show you photographs that prove that. You don't have to take my word for it. 
<clears throat> so um, everybody knows that there, um, there are craters on the highlands of the moon, and then there's a relatively uh, smooth um, area, the, the maria, okay? But that's deceptive. Now, scientists know that, uh, astronomers know that the, the highlands are saturated, just like I explained to you, you know, craters on top of craters, you can't make any more craters because uh, you'd be obliterating one. Uh, if a, a, an object struck here, it would just as likely obliterate a crater as make a totally new one. And this is uh, best illustrated by the far side of the moon. Okay? This gives you a better idea of just how blasted the surface of the moon is. This is the far side. Okay? Nothing but craters. The only reason the near side of the moon um, is not exactly the same is that during the initial bombardment, the first half billion years of, of the life of the moon, okay, uh, all the, uh, the moon and, and the earth and all the planets uh, and moons were being bombarded by large objects, um, planetesimals and very large asteroids. And the moon's uh, near surface is thinner, uh, the, the crust that is thinner than the far side crust, for reasons I don't want to spend time explaining. So at the end of that half billion years of, of bombardment, some of these large uh, bolides, or not just bolides, ne uh, planet, planetesimals, pierced the, uh, the crust of the near side, and uh, hot lava uh, flowed out. And that's what caused the Mario. Okay, but that ended, that, uh, it was, it's called the late heavy bombardment. It ended half a billion years ago, okay? And so the moon has been struck by meteorites ever since, all right? Now, um, as I started to say, the fate of meteors and craters on Earth and the Moon is, is completely different. You know, we're talking you know, very uh, exact opposite situations. The th our thick atmosphere destroys most meteorites, okay? uh, and, and at least drastically slows them down. And um, the surface of the Earth is constantly being erased through erosion and geological activity. So the craters are, are almost all gone that ever, that ever existed on the Earth except for a few, and I'll, I'll, I'll be sh showing you one in, one in particular. The moon has no atmosphere, and as a matter of fact, the fact that the moon has no atmosphere has been critical in all, in, you know, this study that I've been doing, that I've, that I've been showing you, um, you know, cases of. Um, it has uh, no significant erosion or geological activity, so meteorites hit full, with full speed and force, and uh, craters remain basically forever. This is a, an impact strike of a meteorite, um, this is a photograph from 1953, and it was found that the crater there, they found the crater and it was about 200 meters wide. This is a uh, video of a meteorite hitting the moon, and we're seeing more and more of that, because as astronomers are paying more and more attention to it, okay? <clears throat> so the moon has been struck by meteorites forever, for four billion years. This is a, uh, one of the most famous craters, uh, Tycho Crater. And uh, this white area around it is the ejecta blanket. And then you have um, uh, crater rays, or um, I guess they're called crater rays, yeah. And um, that's, all of this is a, a lot of material in, in large chunks. that are, are shot out for thousands of miles, even this far, okay? And this is what uh, one astronomer says. As you gaze at the ray system, try to appreciate the force behind an impact that would scatter boulders more than a thousand miles across the surface of the moon. It is popularly assumed that these rays have a, te a texture of base powder and that an astronaut would have difficulty detecting them if he were standing in the middle. Such is not the case. The brighter rays are made up of ejected rubble that consists of crushed rock and boulders that are up to a couple of feet in diameter. Large rays are commonly several feet thick and would be difficult to walk through. Okay, and this is actually an under underestimate. A couple of feet thick and much larger than that. Now, Tycho is just this one crater right here. There are countless craters, just as big as Tycho and even larger. The only reason that we don't see um, uh, the crater rays, uh, uh, is that the term crater rays? Anyway, the rays and the um, ejecta for all the craters is that those are visible only for a limited time. Um, they are uh, colored, They're colored by radiation from the sun and micrometeorites. Okay, but they were, they're all sitting there. All that uh, material, just like Tycho's, is, is sitting there, okay, covering the moon. This is Copernicus, and it has a large ejecta blanket and, and, and rays. And um, the, this is uh, Kepler, Aristarchus. Between these three, a large section of the moon 
is covered with uh, ejecta blankets and uh, rays of, of, of you know, large amounts of material. And this is the largest maria on the moon. On the moon. It's uh, Oceanus Procellarum. <clears throat> now, look at uh, Copernicus a little more closely. You see these uh, this string of craters here? Those are not independent craters. Those are secondary craters uh, caused by material being uh, blasted out of Copernicus. So material got blasted out of, out of Copernicus at the time of that impact, went up in space, came back down, and made their, their own craters, those, those objects. These uh, two largest here are four miles wide, okay? And to show you that in perspective, this is meteor crater on Earth, the um, best preserved large crater on Earth. This is only three quarters of a mile, and it's huge. These are uh, craters here are two to four, in this bunch here are two to four miles wide. In this um, higher resolution photograph, <clears throat> all these innumerable craters around Copernicus are about a mile and a half wide, still twice as wide as um, meteor crater on Earth. That's how blasted the moon is throughout. This is all in Amari, in Amari, okay? The quote unquote smooth part, okay? Don't even think about it. The, the highlands, I mean, that's super blasted. This is a, a, a um, small, relatively small crater, only four kilometers wide about, okay? It looks smooth there on the, on the, on the periphery. These are all boulders, um, very large boulders. The largest ones of these are 150 feet wide, okay? The size of a very large apartment building on, on, uh, in one of our neighborhoods, uh, a large part of a city block larger than, than, than a car, you know, or a house for that matter. <clears throat> so we're going to look at um, this uh, mare here, a typical mare. This is the, you know, super blasted highlands, right? And you, t you look at that mare and you think, um, it, you know, that looks kind of smooth. We're going to zoom in on, on this part of it right here. This square and the bottom half specifically. That's what this probably typical mare, there's no reason to think that this is atypical. This is what a mare on the moon looks like. It is covered with craters. Um, this, these craters right here, these three are 300 yards wide. This one right here is 100 yards wide. I, I measured these things, okay? And so it's a jumble of craters and, and you know, countless tiny craters, smaller craters. And if you were to focus closer, if you were to um, resolve this closer, um, it would be even more craters. Okay, now um, the all the landings, the landings were in different areas, uh, different types of terrain. Apollo 11 and 12 were in um, Mares, 14 and 16 were in Highlands, 15 and 17 were on the edges of, of Mares within mountain, uh, within mountains, uh, mountain chains, okay? But they all, all, these are photographs now. Finally, we're getting to photographs the astronauts allegedly took. The photographs are all, almost all identical, essentially identical. That's Apollo 11. That's Apollo uh, uh, 12. This is Apollo 14 in the highlands. 15, 16 in mega highlands. 17 with the fake mountains in the background, but um, we're not going to pay attention to that right now. Washed out, right? But look at the ground. No craters. But essentially, no craters and no boulders. It's a flat, featureless terrain in all of the um, missions. That's, I could show you thousands of these uh, photographs like these. They have to go driving miles and miles to find a boulder. <laughs> Literally. They have to go driving miles and miles to find, a, a, allegedly find a crater, but they don't show you the inside of the crater. They never found a crater on the moon, a large crater. Okay. And I'm gonna sh now we're going to turn to Apollo 14 and look at that mission a little more closely. This is Apollo 14 right here in the uh, moderate highlands. This is uh, the landing site right smack in the middle of this image. <clears throat> That's uh, this is from Morrow, right here that crater, and this is the landing site just a little bit below that arrow. That, that's not uh, totally accurate. The landing site is just a little bit below that arrow, in the cusp of this uh, ridge here, okay, and with the highlands in the, uh, in, the, in, the uh, in the background or on the other side. All right. And they went specifically looking for a place uh, with significant relief, okay? That was their term. Because 11 and 12 were totally, totally boring. And I won't even, I won't even get into that. I don't even have time to get into those two missions. So th this is uh, an official uh, 
not, not necessarily NASA, but this is what they, they, they say, is that they're looking for a hilly region and ridges a few hundred feet high. Okay, this is what they landed in, allegedly, right? Don't forget that. Ridges, or yeah, a ridge, specifically, this one ridge, especially, and hills. Okay, so this is the an, uh, a, an amateur photograph, and you can only trust amateur photographs and pre-Apollo um, NASA photographs. The rest are um, just about all faked. Official NASA photographs since Apollo uh, have been pretty much doctored and faked. Okay, and I'll show you proof of that in, also as we go along. All right, so this is the um, this is the ridge that we're talking about, uh, and they're right there in that little uh, uh, cusp of that arc. Okay, right there, and then there are more ridges and hills over there. And this is the ridge again in another amateur photograph. Okay, it's very prominent, and the landing site is right there. <clears throat> Now the specific thing, the most specific thing, even more than ridges and hills that they're looking for, is Cone Crater. Okay, they're, they're going to uh, go investigate Cone Crater, which is by moon standards a, a small, very small crater, but it would still be size, a sizable crater by Earth standards. That crater doesn't exist. They doctored this. They they, they added the, uh, they did the 1970s version of photoshopping and added that crater. And there are several reasons I could tell you that. Uh, one intrinsic to, to Cone Crater, and, and the other reason is that uh, I'm going to show you in the next uh, several missions how they totally, I mean, totally uh, fake the, 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 the landing site. Here they're just uh, take this is their baby steps, where, where they're really uh, starting to, to fake things, but in, in they're, they're not going all out yet, okay? Now, um, that crater, there are several things weird about that crater. Look at this one right here. This is another crater, Old Nameless. And this arrow, or line, uh, whatever you want to call it, goes right to the edge of this crater. Literally right to the edge of that crater. That's all nameless. The landing site is in the exact right spot. Why does this line for Cone Crater point to the edge of this crater, right above the alleged Cone Crater, not Cone Crater? Okay? It doesn't point to Cone Crater. Um, now, if you look at Cone Crater here, it's much, it's much better defined than any other crater in this image. It's much more sharply defined. This also has much higher contrast. Look at these two craters here, which are about the same uh, size. It's a, it's a different sort of image. This is not this is, does not belong in this image. It was photoshopped. Um, another reason that you can know this is that this is the, the only the second um, pre-Apollo uh, uh, close-up view of, of the landing site that I can find of Apollo 14. There is no cone crater there. It should be right there, right there, just like right here. It should be right there, if not there, and they didn't even label it. Why would that be? Because they decided uh, uh, at some point to add concrete in it. Okay. So they're going to go allegedly uh, go uh, hike up to concrete. Okay. And the weirdest things are going to happen. All right. It's like the Twilight Zone. Um, this is an EVA. That's a map, or, or rather the path of their excursion, and they're going to do it on foot. In, in the other, in the next few missions, they do it on, on in, in, the, in the lunar rover. And uh, here it is again. And the interesting thing about this image um, is that it shows the incline okay, down here. So this is the gradual incline up to the edge of the rim of Cone Crater, 90 meters up. And they do that over a distance of 1,400 meters. So it's a very gradual incline, okay, like so. <clears throat> Yet. During the early stages of the climb, they made good time. Before long, the grade was getting quite steep. What are you talking about? There was nothing steep about what I just showed you. And they were both breathing hard enough to hear back in Houston. The march lasted only, only lasted for a minute or so before Shepard had to call, a, call uh, for a halt. His heart rate was getting up to 140 beats a minute, and he needed a rest. They're in one-sixth Earth gravity. They're carrying around a 50-pound bodies instead of 180 like on Earth. How the hell are they getting tired on that gradual incline? Okay, the two astronauts were not able to find the rim. They couldn't find the freaking crater amid the rolling terrain. Okay, and I'll show you that rolling terrain, quote unquote. They became physically exhausted in the attempts uh, uh, from the attempt, uh, and et cetera, et cetera. They, later, it was determined that they came within 20 meters of the rim, but they couldn't find it. Now, why did they make up this cock and bull story? because they do not have a crater to show us. They're not on the moon, they're not looking at a crater. They're not, they're not in front of a crater on, on the moon, all right? They don't have a crater to show us, so they, make, they literally made up the story out of the This is a, these are 10,000 foot peaks, 
um, in, there, in New Mexico, and I have climbed 10,000 foot peaks. I'm not a um, super serious uh, climber, uh, but I have climbed 10,000 foot peaks, and it's not that big a deal. That's um, 3,000 meters. Those guys, uh, and that's in full earth gravity, obviously, right? Those guys uh, uh, climbed 90 meters in a gradual uh, incline, almost a mile, and they and one six gravity, and they suppose they got tired. It is just absurd. You might as well tell us, you know, uh, elephants uh, can fly, and you know, ants are big animals. Okay. Okay, we're gonna back to Earth to get our, uh, you know, get, get our reality check. This is a, a large crater, and a, and a nice arc as well. Um, the crater that they landed next to would probably be very similar to this, and they landed right in the uh, cusp of the, of the crater, like, like you know something like around here, right? If somebody dropped you uh, from a parachute uh, from a plane and you parachuted down here, you would be able to see that crater, right? <laughs> I mean, obviously, right? And you'll be able to photograph that crater. Photographs that you took of the landscape would show that crater. I uh, excuse me, like ridge, right? Just like this in this photograph, this photographer was able to photograph that crater, something like you know a kilometer away. If this woman had a, a, a camera, she would take a picture of this ridge. And I keep on saying, I'm sorry, I keep on saying crater. I mean ridge. Still talking about ridges. And she would be able to um, photograph that ridge. Craters are on my mind. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> when you study the moon, craters are very much on your mind. So anyway, so um, now these are hills on Earth, right? And if and if you were in the middle of these hills. You would see the hills, and you would be able to photograph the hills. You take a photograph of the landscape, you see the hills. Simple as that, right? Um, OK, going back to Meteor Crater, we're going to look at this a little more closely. Meteor Crater is um, a diameter of 1,200 meters. Cone Crater, the one they're looking for, is 340 meters, a little less than a third the size. But uh, the rim of Meteor Crater is 45 meters high. Cone Crater is 90 meters high, so it's twice. The cone Crater is allegedly twice as high, all right? So this is Meteor Crater on Earth. This is three miles away. If you, if you were told, go walk up to Meteor Crater, there is no way in the world that you would not find Meteor Crater and walk right up to the rim, all right? Um, this, now uh, about a third of that is, is about here, and it twice as high would be here. So this is what you're looking for if you're on the Apollo, in, in that Apollo 14 mission. Cone Crater about this size. You cannot miss Cone Crater. This is a closer view. Now you're just a few hundred meters away. They claimed that they couldn't find Cone Crater. If you are, were told, go find Meteor Crater, you'd have to be literally falling down drunk not to be able to find, uh, uh, excuse me, Meteor Crater. If you, if, you, if you were told to find Meteor Crater, you, you, would, you would find it. There's, it'd be like, uh, to say that you couldn't find Meteor Crater would be like uh, you're told um, you know, you're on the lakefront, Chicago lakefront, and you're told, uh, there's Soldier Field. See Soldier Field there? Go to the edge of Soldier Field and you say, I can't find it. Literally. Literally. Okay. Um, here are um, here's a group of people hiking up to um, Meteor Crater. A young girl, an older woman. It's an easy hike. No problem for anybody. This is people walking around the edge of Meteor Crater. I've been to Meteor Crater. Has anybody been to Meteor Crater? Okay, it's cool, isn't it? I mean, it's super cool. And you can walk all the way around the rim. This is about 20 meters away from the edge of Meteor Crater from the rim. If somebody, if one of these uh, tourists or guests or whatever they are, you know, um, visitors, was right here, how would they not find Meteor Crater? How would they not, how, if you were right here, 20 meters away, like the astronauts who were supposedly were uh, distant from the edge of Cone Crater, how would you not find Meteor Crater? You just walk straight to it. Uh, okay, so anyway, so this is what the, meteor, what the crater looks like inside. It's vast, okay? This is why they couldn't show us Cone Crater, because Cone Crater would be comparable to this. Not, not nearly, not quite as large, but it'd be comparable, and they didn't have that to show us. Yeah, but in different... What state uh, is Meteor Crater in? Arizona. 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 Thank you. But in different, they're based crater in this planet and yeah. no, I, I can different. give you. I'll ask that later, okay? Um, all right, so um, this is the exact landing site, um, and this is the ridge, okay, in a shallow arc, and here are the hills in, in the other direction. Again, this is blown up. There's the ridge. Here, uh, here's the, here are the hills. They're right there, walking in that direction, east. All right. This is um, a um, okay. This is the first, or actually the second specific photograph we see of, of um, their landing site. 
Th this is from 20 meters, uh, excuse me, 20 feet up in, in, the, in the lunar module. Okay, they took a panorama. This is a mosaic. This is half the horizon. Where is the ridge? Where um, are the hills? Okay, this is half the horizon. Either you would have um, crater, uh, excuse me, ridge on one side, hills on the other, or all ridge or all hills. But you would not have a blank, um, flat horizon, period. Here's a panorama. This is 360 degrees around, okay? From, from this uh, antenna dish all the way around the horizon to this, uh, this one, this the same dish, okay? It took a lot of photographs um, and went around, okay? This is the left side of this uh, um, panorama. Flat, no hills. The crater, excuse me, the ridge should be coming in about here. No ridge, okay? No ridge, no hills. <clears throat> okay, now they're going to go on this hike, and uh, they're going to stop at various stations like B2 and do, do various things like take photographs. So we're going to look at B2. That's halfway up. That's uh, right here. They're 30 meters up here. They would be getting a good view of the surrounding landscape. There's another panorama uh, all the way around from one point on the horizon all the way around 360 degrees back to that same point. Okay? No hills, no ridge. Okay? They just have this uh, slight incline, uh, which is allegedly cone crater. Uh, yeah, cone crater, but it doesn't even look like a, a, a um, crater rim. But let's say that that's the crater rim, OK? Um, there's an astronaut walking toward it. How, how is he going to miss that crater? He's walking to, right to it. <clears throat> there's, the, uh, there's the same photograph with um, labeled. There's the rim. There's the center of the crater. How, uh, how is he going to miss that crater? That's what they claim. They, they couldn't find it. Okay. Here they are at the top of the rim, all right? Um, right here, just 100 meters away. And they got a little closer, as a matter of fact. Okay, they're right here. Um, we're going to look at this cl more closely. And there are uh, several things very strange about this photograph. This is a panorama, okay? Uh, this is the left side of that panorama. See this uh, Cooper horizontal? Remember what a Cooper horizontal is? That's that uh, radical um, division between the detailed foreground and the vague background, OK? Um, there is no way that that should be all the way around, OK? You see that, um, uh, that um, division all the way around, OK? Because they're, um, they're right here, all right? And they're looking down a slope. They should be seeing a slope like this not some silly division, inexplicable division. They should be seeing a gradual slope. And they should also be, be seeing the hills, the hills that they were looking for, that we can see on the map, excuse me, on, in the photograph from, you know, from afar. They should be seeing hills like that. They should be seeing a slope in hills, OK? They should not be seeing um, this with no hills, OK? There are no hills back here. This is looking due west, all right? There are no hills, even at the, from the top of that rim, OK? <clears throat> OK, so they said uh, the astronauts were not able to find the rim amid the rolling terrain of the crater slopes. Where is that rolling terrain? There is no rolling terrain there. That's, that's pretty much flat. It's no, pro no problem. They also claim that um, the boulders were impeding them. They couldn't find the rim because there's so many darn boulders. They, sh they literally show us a handful, literally like you know four or five of these things, little rocks. Okay, you guys have been to Arizona, right? You saw the, the crater, um, the meteor crater. In that landscape, there, there are boulders all over the place. There are serious boulders. Okay, these, these aren't even boulders. These are just pitted little rocks. This is what they're claiming is a boulder field. This is the boulder field that prevented them from finding uh, 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 the rim of the crater. Okay, see the uh, footprint right there? These, these so-called boulders are just a few feet wide, literally like the size of this chair, okay? And that, this is what they're claiming prevented them and the rolling terrain. Do you see any rolling terrain there? This is what they claim prevented them from seeing the rim, which is right over there, and, and see, looking into the crater. They couldn't tell us they found the crater. They couldn't photograph the crater because they were not on the moon, and there was no crater there. <clears throat> and then they look back uh, from the edge of the rim, uh, from the edge of the crater, to, to the, that little speck there, the lunar, um, the lunar module. And the hills should be right there, OK? And they're not. Flat horizon. And that's the story of Apollo 14. This is the sort of uh, landscape. They didn't show us a ridge, a prominent ridge, okay? 
that they should have seen and photographed. They didn't show us any hills. They didn't show us um, a crater, the crater that they went there looking for. They didn't show us a lot of uh, uh, smaller craters, a uh, crater strewn boulder, and they didn't show us a boulder strewn landscape either. They showed us nothing. This is the story of the Apollo missions, to one degree or another. Okay, actually, to uh, I'm not to uh, to 100 uh, percent. Okay, but uh, but they did throw in some fake stuff. Um, but I'm not going to be able to get to it all. Now I'm going to. Um, I didn't turn on my timer. How much time do I have? Um, you got uh, exactly. Figure you finish up at 7:30. You got 20 minutes. Okay. All right. That's plenty of time. Um, so uh, this is Apollo 15, and this is the landing site right here. And I'm only going to skip through these last few mis uh, uh, missions. Um, so this is um, these are very tall mountains that they landed in between. Okay. These mountains are the equivalent of Mount Everest. If we if we uh, take into account that Mount Everest sits on a plateau, so you can measure uh, a mountain by the prominence, not from the sea level, but the prominence. These mo uh, mountains are the equivalent of Mount Everest. This is uh, Mount Hadley, and this is Mount Hadley Delta. They landed right in between those two mountains. Okay, Mount Hadley, Mount Hadley Delta. This is Mount Everest. Okay, uh, Mount Hadley is taller than that. This is Mount Rainier, towering over Seattle. Mount Hadley is taller than that. This is Mount Fuji, totally dominating this scene in, uh, in, in Japan. Mount Hadley and Mount Hadley Delta are taller than that. This is what they show us as Mount Hadley. It's a joke. It is a freaking joke, OK? Um, this is a clay model, at best, or paper mache model, if not totally just drawn, okay, uh, out of, you know, just uh, drawn on paper or whatever. I don't know how they how they did that. And, and notice also the the, the Cooper horizontal. This is Mount uh, Hadley Delta. Even worse, more fuzzy. These this is the kind of quote unquote mountains that they show us. Totally uh, uh, featureless, no detail, okay, just, just totally fake. Those are are no more mountains than this is mountain. They show us they're showing us cartoon mountains. This is the landscape, okay? Allegedly, this is a, a NASA photograph. Look how bland it is, uh, washed out. Look at this. Uh, uh, this is Saint George Crater. It looks like a little donut, okay? Like a featureless donut. This is the actual um, terrain. That's uh, an Apollo. Uh, excuse me, not Apollo. No way, that's Apollo. That's a uh, lunar orbiter photograph from 1967, two years um, before the uh, first Apollo landing, okay? It's the same uh, same uh, terrain, the uh, same area, right? This is Hadley Rill, which I, I would like to get into this, but I don't have time. <clears throat> but uh, this is the same area. See how it's the same area? Okay, this is St. George Crater, the real St. George Crater. Look at all the detail there, look at the features. It's rough, right? This is the, 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 the phony, the phony St. George Crater that NASA makes up. So I want to focus in on this area right here, okay? It's covered, uh, this is Amari, it's covered with craters. Absolutely craters everywhere, okay? You can't, you, you couldn't, you couldn't literally walk the distance between uh, the length of this room without running into craters. This is, this crater right here is 150 meters wide, about. This little crater right next to it is uh, 50 meters, okay? And there are countless, you know, smaller craters, okay? This is the, Apollo, the equivalent Apollo uh, uh, image, the NASA image, okay? Uh, same area, see these craters right here? That crater, those two, and, and those two. There it is, that crater, those two, and those two. So what they did to make this image was they defocused. They, they took a, a genuine image like this, they defocused it, and airbrushed it, and uh, washed it up, okay? So that now you can imagine driving that stupid lunar uh, um, rover through here, avoiding the craters, right? And they're one, of, one of their famous EVAs. They drove for miles and miles all around the surface of the moon. They would not even think about driving a uh, vehicle in that. They totally, do I mean, they totally doctored the image. This is um, uh, St. George Crater, that crater that we saw just a minute ago. Uh, next, near the landing site, the landing site is right here. That crater has a very prominent rim, okay? 
very wide, prominent rim. And it's uh, a mile and a half wide, twice as wide as meteor crater on Earth, okay? This is what they show us, in the, in, this is the photograph of that same crater, same crater, just right here. Totally featureless, no, practically no rim, and only two-thirds the size. It's com a completely different object. That is not that. That right there and that right there are two <coughs> totally different things, period. This is Apollo 16, okay? This, this is the real image, this is the fake image, okay? And I uh, went through, looked at that, those two images closely, and I saw, uh, I don't know how many that is, more than a dozen distinct uh, fakeries, okay? Craters that are in one image and not the other, uh, mountains, mountains that are lit in one and not the other, okay? Just, it's just an invention. I'll give you just a, a couple of examples. See that crater right here? Can you all see that? Is it easy to see, that crater right there? Okay? It's not there at all in the fake image, okay? Uh, this mountain is lit here. It's not lit there. Whereas the other surrounding mountains are lit equally. That one is not, okay? This crater right here, North, North Ray Crater, they're gonna go, allegedly go visit, just like, more or less like Cone Crater, they're allegedly gonna go visit that crater, this one right here, okay? But they're not gonna be able to photograph the inside of it for some strange reason. Okay, it's, it's not even there in the original image, okay? This image, uh, excuse me, this image is doctored as well, in many ways. Um, this is an original, uh, real image, a lunar orbiter image of the Apollo 17 landing site. It's not meant to be blown up this, 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 this much. Okay, it's, it's a small image. Um, so that's why this is blurry. This is the official image, okay? And you can see that, that it's two different, uh, two different uh, landing sites, or it's, it's, it's a different terrain, okay? See that uh, large crater right here? There's one larger crater right there. Here, that's not a larger crater. It's equal in size to these others. There's a, a half dozen equal sized craters there, and that one larger crater there. This is some um, elongated thing. I don't know what that is. Okay, it's, it's, not in, it's not here. And there are various other differences. This is the, la the, the landing site of Apollo 17. This is fake. This is the real image, okay? Now, get ready for the, for the, for the absolute killer, okay? <laughs> See that ridge right there? Or rather that peak right there? Okay, that peak right there. What happened to it? <coughs> it should be right there. That peak right there. The, whoever made this, doctored this image, and it's a doctored image. I, I, can, I can explain to you more or less how they did it, uh, but I, uh, I'm limited with time, and it would take a little while. Okay, that um, peak, they missed. The animator missed that completely. Totally phony. This uh, Apollo uh, program was nothing more or less than a vast, propaganda campaign. It was totally unreal. The U.S. government's moon landing program has been called the crowning achievement of humankind, the greatest boast of the species, the event in human history most associated with pride in our own accomplishments. It didn't happen, period. The plain fact is that it was an extremely elaborate hoax, a stupendous lie, a lie on a scale unprecedented in the history of the world. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. about an hour and five minutes. Okay. Was it wasn't bad. Good. Um, I got a quick question for you. You made reference to several, you know, with, with when the stuff was in the atmosphere, with the uh, trails left by cars and a lunar rover. <coughs> Couldn't it be also? the difference between the moon photographs and some of the stuff on Earth, you cannot explain because the Earth has an atmosphere and the moon does not. Okay, what's, what's the question? The, 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 the thing is, I, when you're, you're comparing like the views on the moon mm -hmm. with, with some of the stuff, I mean, on Earth you have an atmosphere, you have landmarks, you have references, yeah. and on the moon you, you just don't have it. I mean, it's just all one vast thing, what could be a mile away, could be 20 miles away. What okay, but specifically, you mentioned the rocks, and the car and the rocks, and, and, and the lunar rover? What? Well, what I'm saying is that you made a comparison mm -hmm. between the uh, so trails left when you spun the wheels right, right, right. On, a, on a car yeah. 
and then the similar things on the lunar rover, right. you had the same things, and you said there was a difference because the moon had an atmosphere, and I mean the Earth had an atmosphere, and the moon did not. There should have been a difference. There wasn't. Okay. Right. Right. There wasn't a difference uh, where there, where there should have been. Where you should have seen on the moon is the dust particles uh, growing in a shallow arc straight out from the wheels, just like the rocks did on, on, on the Earth, because uh, they wouldn't have counted any errors. They would have been in the vacuum. So you shouldn't have seen a, a classic rooster tail like on Earth. But would that? I mean, I, I also know too that the lunar rover had metal tubes for tires. So, what that, 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 that Well, the difference would make it would be we could kick up those rooster tails versus the... Uh, there would have been no rooster tails on, on the moon. It's, it's impossible because rooster tails are caused by the atmosphere, by, by, by air. Who's moderating? I am not going to be calling on people. I, I don't moderate. I'll be right okay. Just a minute. Give me a couple minutes. Just call a couple other people. Uh, yes, Ivana. Uh, Mr. Ananda, I have a question. What difference between crater in Arizona and Moon? What is the difference in what way? I mean, the Arizona, the, the uh, that Arizona crater is the best preserved crater on Earth, the large one, okay, and it looks uh, very much like a moon crater. When we when we look at close-up photographs of moon craters, they're very similar. Um, so there there shouldn't be much of a difference uh, between that crater and, and, a, and a moon crater. One more, very quick, can I? It's my favorite subject. So don't you think like what your opinion, just opinion, what you think like extraterrestrial they was landing on the moon? Uh, that's beyond the subject matter here. Um, next question. Tell me. You, why would they lie? Why, why would they lie? Why would they lie? Okay, uh, you know, I I had I had no material. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. I had uh, more material on, on your motives and, and, and what that was, what was behind the, 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 the Yeah, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer your question. I'm just saying that I didn't cover it here because... Um, you can I, answer I, my question. I had a, a lack of, of time, but um, it was really um, a propaganda campaign um, in the sense that they were in the middle of the 60s, right? And, um, or toward the end of the 60s. And Vietnam was going on. Uh, the U.S. was acquiring a very bad image. Uh, they were in a quote-unquote uh, Cold War race with the Soviet Union, uh, both uh, in geostrategic terms and also in, in, a, in a race to the moon, allegedly, okay? <laughs> and so they needed um, a propaganda win. Uh, they needed um, something like a, a, a lunar, yeah, to ra raise them, to raise their reputation, etc. cetera. Um, so they needed something like a landing on the moon, and they couldn't do it uh, in, in real life, so they faked it. Um, and uh, this guy Wisniewski, one of the authors, uh, uh, explains that um, a little better than I'm doing right now, um, and I had quotes from him, but it's, it was clearly um, a propaganda uh, campaign. Um, yeah, t t the U.S. dominates, he had a quote uh, that says, the U.S. dominates the world um, by, by its lies more than by its military or economic strength. Dig that. That's pretty profound, I would, I would say. Over here. Oh, we talked about the radiation and how that would have been a, um, prevented them from actually getting to the moon or dealing yeah. with it. I mean, why doesn't that affect the satellites that are circling the Earth? Is it because we're inside a zone? Yeah. Or well, first of all, it does affect the satellites. The Van Allen Belt, uh, belt radiation has knocked out numerous satellites because uh, there's a piece of the Van Allen belts, I didn't ex go into it here. Uh, but there are, are belts surrounding the Earth within a few thousand miles. Mm -hmm. uh, but they, in one particular spot over Brazil, um, the the the, uh, Van Allen, the inner Van Allen belt comes within 200 kilometers of the Earth's surface, and that's within the, uh, the zone of many satellites. And that has actually not, it's called the South Atlantic anomaly, and it has knocked out numerous satellites. So satellites are affected, but they they aren't they tend not to be destroyed as a whole because they stay within, uh, within the Van Allen belts, inside of the Van Allen belts. And, and not to mention the solar uh, particle um, uh, events from the sun. But if, if, so if a satellite were to get <coughs> shot out beyond the Van Allen belts, and they'd probably it, be destroyed. It, it would be more susceptible. Um, I, now, there, have, there probably have been probes. In fact, there have been probes to the moon, OK? Mm -hmm. So uh, they would be affected in different ways. I'm not uh, an expert on that. Mm -hmm. But uh, all I can tell you is that um, there's definitely radiation space. Nobody, uh, no serious scientist denies that. And uh, there are many effects of radiation space. And one of them is, as a matter of fact, knocking out some satellites. I have a question. Yeah, I have a question. Mr. Naranda, uh, 
please, can I ask a question? Speak up with your question, please. And the moon. What what's, do you think? I don't know your opinion. What's the question? Extraterrestrial in the moon. What do you think? What, they, what, what is the exact question? You said you, you made a statement. You didn't ask a question. Did they ever land on moon extraterrestrial I don't know. different planet? You know. I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know. Huh? I said I don't know. I know, but what do you think? Jonathan, 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 you got your hand up? Yeah. Um, in this magazine article recently, uh, let me get it correct, How It Works magazine of the summer of 2017, they have, they have a, a two-page quick summary of Apollo program. And I wanted to ask you about one of these uh, claims they made. They said in this paragraph, the astronauts installed six observatories on the surface of the moon, which operated for many years. Uh -huh. And it's, uh, it claims that the wealth of data from these observatories uh, transformed uh, our understanding of the moon and also hinted at the history of Earth and the entire universe. Uh -huh. Is that findings that they could have very well have reached without landing on the moon? Um, I don't know what exact observatories you, you're, you're, you're talking about. Well, that's exactly my point. They don't even show a picture of these observatories, but they claim they're there, and it seems like this is a common occurrence. Yeah, right. There's things that, there's, right. there's no me, way they, they... Let me give you an example of... They oh, only know, and we have to take it on good Exactly, faith. exactly. Um, let me um, they give you are. an example of, of one of these. Uh, they called um, they were called uh, uh, something like experiments. Okay, they they weren't necessarily the astronauts in Apollo didn't necessarily call them uh, uh, um, observatories, but they had uh, they left laser um, mirrors or, or mirrors for, for laser beams shot from Earth to measure the uh, allegedly to measure the distance between the Earth and the Moon. Laser reflectors. Okay. Um, allegedly, okay, and they claim um, that well, that proves that we went to the moon because we've been using those to measure the distance between them. Okay, uh, uh, this same author was Nuski, who was one of the best. Um, he investigated that, and he spoke to some astronomers, uh, some you know, better, uh, you know, not more knowledgeable astronomers, and they said, um, what they, you know, that that doesn't add up, because um, the, the if you shoot a laser beam at the moon, even though it starts out very narrow on the Earth. By the time it gets to the moon, it's miles wide, many miles wide. Th those those uh, reflectors that they left on the moon were on like a foot or a few feet wide. Okay, so you wouldn't know if you, whatever, uh, and then also the laser beam would bounce off the surface of the moon, whether or not there were reflectors there. So if, if one photon, <laughs> you know, uh, if you get uh, you're getting you know countless photons, right? How would you know which photon came from that one reflector? So that doesn't add up. Also. They don't even know exactly where the landings are. They don't have. They literally do not have uh, a, a, an exact location for each of the landings. There are various, you know, estimates, various, you know, um, uh, figures given. But they, so you wouldn't even know where those reflectors were to, to zoom in to, to find out. That's just one of many examples of, of things that they can easily claim because we know we can't check on it. Charlie. Yeah, Ted. It's been about 50 years since. This hope to watch, and there were thousands of engineers involved in the project, or at least on the payroll of NASA. It's a big operation in the Jet Propulsion Lab. Yeah. No one has come forth to say the tell-all book or said this. What studio was it filmed in? That's well, actually, um, Bill can you tell me the name of the cameraman and the studio? No, no, I can't tell you. I, Bill, Casing, Bill Casing was an employee who wrote one of these books, was an employee of um, Rocket Dining. Okay. They all killed? No, I just told, okay, uh, no, I just told you, um, Bill Casing was an employee of Rocket Dining. He was going to meet with one of the astronauts, okay, um, uh, a few hours or a day or two, whatever it was, I don't remember, before he was supposed to meet, uh, he uh, mysteriously uh, died. Um, the, the, uh, the best case, of course, is, is, is uh, Gus Grissom, okay? He was a whistleblower. In fact, I'll give you two. Um, Gus Grissom uh, was a whistleblower. He was making noises about how this, this whole thing is, is a sham, okay? Uh, this lunar, uh, this, this spacecraft isn't going anywhere. 
um, he was pretty much murdered. Okay, in um, I didn't I wasn't able to get to it here because again everything takes time, right? Um, they, he was put in. He and his two crewmates were put in this capsule in high pressure oxygen. Okay, um, with electrical wiring all over the place, um, and they and also with a door on the capsule that only opened uh, uh, inward. Okay, so if, if 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 the capsule is under pressure, you can't open it. So they pretty much cremated. Uh, and everybody knows, okay, everybody at that time, anybody uh, with any kind of knowledge would have known that that was an extremely serious, uh, dangerous situation. Uh, so they pretty much cremated him. And that was the second attempt on his life. They tried to drown him before that. Um, then uh, after that um, uh, incident, uh, this guy named Barron, I forget his last name, he was an investigator um, of, of, of the safety of Apollo. He prepared a 500-page report. He went and testified before Congress a week later. Uh, or two weeks later, whatever, uh, he was killed uh, mysteriously on a railroad track. His car just happened to get stuck on the railroad track. Him and his, and his uh, wife and daughter were killed. They murdered him as well. So people have died mysteriously um, in, in, in this manner. And there were other astronauts uh, who died, uh, but we don't know, I don't know, that you know those were uh, a foul play, but these two definitely were. So NASA has, and also, you know, these are military men. These astronauts are military men, and, and and many of the people involved are company men. Okay, they're not gonna, they're not in the business, they're not in the habit of, of, of you know, rattling and, and, and yakking about the the fraud that they're involved in. There's five thousand civilian employees in NASA, probably. Right, and um, the, the, Ma the Manhattan Project, the, the Manhattan Project had many thousands as well. That secret never came out. Okay, uh, you know how many people were involved in in 9/11, in for instance? That was a false flag. That was a deception. Just because there are a lot of people involved, that's no proof that it couldn't have been uh, a deception. Are you going to talk about 9-11? Uh, no. no. I mean, unless you want me. Unless uh, in the... Uh, can, we, can we ask you to talk about 9-11? That's yeah. today. You that's have a question. Today. I can't understand your question. What's your question? Can you, could you ask about 9-11? I mean, I suppose so. Are there any rules about the subject matter? Don't we have a previous program on that? Okay, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. We're not silent. Can you talk about it in another session? Oh, oh, I've talked about 9-11 uh, in yes. other presentations. And a lot of them are already uh, videotaped. Yeah. If you go, yeah. if you go to our we're website. We're going to hand out literature in two weeks of fact sheets on that yeah, one you're asking about it. and some other things that the press doesn't cover. So if yeah. come two weeks from now and you get all your questions answered. Thank you. Uh, over here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did you see the film with the, uh, the women that were called computers who were involved in all the, the mathematics and the... No, I heard something about that. Was that, was that in the Apollo program? No, that was in the uh, I'm, I'm Manhattan Project. I'm wondering if they were uh, no. in this was hoax. Accomplices? Yeah, it, it didn't seem that way in that figures. Cold and, breaking. Were they when, in Apollo? Cold breaking. Yeah. Okay. It was, um, I think, was it Glenn Grissom's first uh, launch into space? It was in the early days of uh, like before Mercury? we went there. It might have been Mercury. Mm -hmm. And they had a whole bunch of uh, you know, African-American women that were man man okay. genes okay. helping in that project. Yeah. Um, no, I didn't hear about I heard about something like that, but I didn't know it was connected to Apollo. But that would, that would very well, could easily be before the uh, hoaxing started. Because um, the, it only started like in the <coughs> early to mid uh, 60s. The, uh, the program started uh, a few years before that. So um, according to like Ralph Rene and, and, and others, the uh, hoaxing started like uh, after Mercury and maybe halfway through Gemini. So if those people were in the early part of the program, of the space program, it might not have been fraud at all. Was John Glenn the first one? Uh, he was the first to because orbit, I think. He was the he first to orbit. He didn't want to go up until uh, one of them used her mathematic ability to make sure that they knew where to pick him up in the ocean. That might have been genuine. That, that uh, might have been genuine. If he was the first, um, that probably was genuine. It, it wasn't, the entire space program wasn't, wasn't fake. It was, it was when they said, well, we have to get to the moon. And people were like, what are you, what are you talking about? Okay, um, Jonathan again? What? Okay, so in the government of the United States uh, official story, this happened between 1969 and 1972.
the government's official story. So do you believe in 2018 this is now possible through the technology we have, for example, through the International Space Station program? Do you think we could go to either Mars or the moon now with now's technology? No, no, because um, they have not yet figured out how to protect astronauts uh, from the radiation. So, no, period. What about the International Space Station? It's not, it's inside the uh, Earth's orbit. Uh, excuse me, it's, it's in low Earth orbit. Yeah. Uh, and there were other quotes um, also. I mean, I really pared down this, this presentation to keep it within about an hour. There were there are, um, NASA astronauts and spokespeople who, are, who uh, talk about going to um, the moon and Mars and elsewhere, literally, as if it, as if it never been done. Um, there's a video of this one guy, uh, um, his last name is Kelly, or is it Kelly Smith? No, yeah, his name is Kelly Smith. Um, and he's talking about the Orion program, which is uh, the successor to Apollo. Through the entire video, he explains um, how we're going to build this rocket, and we're going to go up, and we're going to protect our astronauts from 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 uh, from the space radiation, and we're going to do. And he never mentions Apollo. And and he says we're going to uh, for the first time. And then some of the astronauts literally say we're going to for the first time go beyond uh, low Earth orbit. They 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 admit they admit that they uh, never uh, went to the moon. It's like an inside secret amongst them. Well, yeah. They know uh, it's a career killer if they actually say it out loud to the people. Well, they, ha they practically have said it out loud uh, among themselves. Okay, the younger generation of, of astronauts can't live a total and can't, can't live in a total lie, right? Because they have to talk among, among themselves. You know, they can't act like they went to the, uh, completely as if they went to Apollo. Uh, they, what they want to do is they just want to put it behind them and, and kind of like ignore it and like, okay, well, that's, you know, in the attic, that's the skeleton in, in, in the closet. We, we, you know, we, we just ignore it altogether. Over here. Uh, so, so you're, if I hear you correctly, you're saying that, um, that there are younger astronauts, a new, the newer generation of astronauts who are basically saying out loud, we've never been beyond the Earth's orbit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are their names, and are, is this on video that I can actually look at there's, online? Yeah, there, there was this, guy, this one name. One guy is, is um, called. Is, his last name is Bert. V I R T. He's commander of uh, a space station commander. V I R T. Um, and then Kelly Smith. You can. You can. Um, he's. The, if you if you Google or not, I shouldn't use that term because Google's. I don't want to even get into that subject. But if you search um, Kelly, Kelly Smith and the Orion program, uh, or, uh, something about fire. Uh, but anyway, um, you probably will get that video. And then uh, Bert is, is this NASA commander, and he's talking about how you know we're, we're going to the moon pretty much for the first time. You can find that. I, I, can, I can look it up for you uh, if, you, if you, want, you want to get in touch with me. It's going. Okay, um, if I was, I'm a skeptic of the evidence. Give me your top one or two or three bullet points that will convince me that the moon landing was a hoax and not real. Okay, just, just you know, and I'm not asking for a lot of detail. Just the best reasons that I could be convinced. Well. I, there, I went through, uh, between last time and this time, I went through uh, maybe a, a dozen or more. Uh, one of the most convincing, uh, you know, very simple, I right. the, uh, stick to the simplest ones. Okay. Uh, in Apollo uh, 11, they show us a scene where you clearly have a spotlight. You have a, a, a zone of, of focused light, and outside of that zone, everything is much darker. That's a uh, rank impossibility on the moon. Because on a flat, expansive uh, field, um, whether on the moon or the earth, the, moon, the sun illu illumination, and it was only the sun that was illuminating uh, the scene in, 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 a, in Apollo photographs, that has to be even. Okay? And they corrected that in, in later missions. Then they sh after, after they discovered their mistake, apparently, they showed us a, a, a correctly lit scene. But in Apollo 11, they had, they had that mistake. Um, also, last time, so some of the simpler ones were, la you know, last in right, last right. presentation, and I thought they were very persuasive. Um, when <laughs> this was a, this one here, take this one here. They uh, are entering the the orbit around the moon. Uh, this is Apollo 11 again, and there's no way in the world that you can stop um, 
the, the spaceship and, and, and hover and, and, and you know, sit there like a tourist photographing uh, a, a given crater on right. the moon for, for three or four, you know, three minutes at, 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 at a time. Because uh, you're in orbit like a, like a rock, like, right. like, like, a, like the moon around the Earth. You're moving thousands of miles an hour. I don't even know how fast. Okay. That's what they did um, in Apollo 11. They sh I showed you the video. Right, right. Um, it, that's totally, totally fake. I mean, they, they were not orbiting the moon, period. Okay. Um, I mean, I would have to think about some of the, another one or two of, of the very specific things, but that's the, that's the kind of evidence that we're dealing with. Okay. Just, just plain impossibilities. Charlie again? All right. Yeah, Thanks. Ted, I, I lived for a number of years in the Great Plains, in Kansas and Nebraska. You, you did what? I lived. Oh, lived, okay. Uh -huh. And yeah. where the rolling hills. And you seem to have the mistaken notion of many city people that these are perfectly flat. And like in rolling hills, like. You know, it depends if you're at the bottom of the hill or at the top, and the horizon goes all over the place. You're aware of that, of course. Uh, yeah, I guess and so. And you cannot see perfectly like you think it's a flat world, two-dimensional world. Are you yeah. aware of that? I mean, I, I, I could give examples where I went looking for a farmer and I completely squared the area, went around it, and I did not see him. Okay, but Charlie... Was I deceived by the government? No, Charlie, What's Charlie. <laughs> um, was that a... Was that a... They, 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 they are not showing us... Uh, uh, they're, they're not showing us... Uh, I swear question. I did not find you. Okay, okay, but uh, they're not showing us questionable, you know, things where you think, well, is that hill, you know, this tall or that tall, or... No, they are showing us completely flat terrain where, they should, where they're claiming there are hills. I've been, uh, I've traveled a lot myself. Okay? So you know what I, the moon I, I traveled, is like. I've traveled, I've I know what mountains are like, all right? They're claiming, see, this is, this is, actually, this is a good point. This, this, is, this is a good point, okay, Charlie? They didn't go to some, uh, uh, they didn't go to a uh, neutron star, all right? They didn't land um, um, on the surface of the sun. Right? They landed on the surface of another planetary body that we can see with our own eyes through telescopes have craters and, and, and mountains, okay? Um, and, they claim, and they claim to have landed in among uh, uh, mountains and they can't show us a mountain. It's absurd on the face of it, okay? I've, I've been to, I've been in you mountains, I've been on Follow mountains. question. Mm -hmm. The only thing you know about the terrain of the moon, what can you tell me by looking down at it? Uh, you know, what is, what is your, what is, what's your question? Yeah, what, is, what is your exact question? You, yeah. you're, you're, your whole thing about the horizon is invalid. Uh, is that a question? Okay. You know, isn't that, isn't that simply rolling hills? Okay, but they didn't, show, they didn't show us anything resembling rolling hills. Time after time, they don't show us anything remotely resembling what they, they claim to be showing. Okay, for instance, um, I, I, again, I didn't have enough time to show you everything that I have. Okay, they have craters. Um, they, uh, there are craters on the, on the moon, uh, one in particular, North Ray, that is uh, about the same uh, size as Meteor Crater in diameter and twice as deep, okay? They, for some strange reason, there must be uh, uh, a National Guardsmen rimming that crater, preventing their, them from uh, going to the edge of that crater and taking a photograph of the inside of that crater. How could they not show us the inside of a freaking crater on the moon? There are plenty of craters. They went to one, to the very end, and they can't show us the inside. And what they do show us is something that looks for all the world like a, a, a crater a, a hundred meters wide. You know, like a few uh, uh, times the size, of this, the size of this room here. Okay. That's what they actually show us in the photographs. That's what we see in the photographs. They're claiming that's Meteor Crater. You can look at a photograph of Meteor Crater, you can look on the, uh, at, at the inside of Meteor Crater, and it's this vast, stupendous sight. Okay? What they show us time and time again with, with craters, with, with Hadley Rill, which I could, didn't have time to get into, with mountains, okay, with, ter with, with terrain, is nothing like what they claim they're showing. Okay? The, the moon is not... Uh, has some similarities with Earth in terms of craters and mountains, okay, valleys, etc. It's, it's not going to be a totally uh, unre unrecognizable world. I have one more. Uh, you're back in the blue shirt. You haven't had a question yet. Yeah, uh, I just wonder. You, you, 
you think uh, the, the landing is not real, and also the orbiting around the moon is not real also. Yeah, they didn't go, they didn't leave uh, low Earth orbit. And like I said, they admit it uh, nowadays. I have a question. What do you think uh, right now China is planning to uh, land uh, astronaut on the moon? They, well, they can't. Uh, okay, in fact, that, I'm glad you brought that up. Okay, because the Russians um, in the in the 60s were far more advanced than the U.S. in their space program. Okay, they had the first uh, human to orbit the moon. Uh, excuse me, the Earth. They had the first animal in, in, in orbit. They had the first uh, uh, rendezvous. They, I mean, they were they did all the first. Okay. The Gagarin. Gagarin. Yuri Gagarin. Yuri Gagarin. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. And, but. They, they stopped short of going to the moon. The, 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 the uh, Americans, who were constantly behind, trailing behind the Russians, all of a sudden vaulted above, uh, ahead of the Russians and, and, went, and went to the moon. Okay? Um, the Russians okay, admitted, admitted, they said out loud, they wrote, you know, you can see it in writing, we couldn't go to the moon because there's the, uh, space radiation. This, their scientists and doctors say uh, it's too dangerous, there, there's space radiation, we can, there, that cannot be avoided. So, so no, so yeah, and that has not, that problem has not been solved. So nobody's going to the moon or Mars or anywhere else anytime soon. Did they say uh, Apollo is fake? Did they, uh, they did not necessarily st uh, say that, and that's kind of complicated. Why wouldn't they? Because they had skeletons in their closet as well. They had, they were playing a game with, with, uh, with the United States. They were dependent on the United States, for instance, okay, for grain imports. Okay, if the U.S. had cut off uh, the massive uh, grain uh, exports to the, to the Soviet Union, they might have starved to death or whatever. So there were there, there was there were various political uh, uh, geopolitical games being played, and also um, they don't want their BS exposed either. They, they weren't they were not clean, you know, totally clean either. Okay, just a brief reminder: we're going to go five more minutes in questions. We have another question, question here. Yes, what's your question? Why is the what is in China today? What is, what is China? Why is Trump threatening China? Why is Trump threatening China? Um, well, that's <laughs> that's yeah, that's, that's a topic for rebuttal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. We're trying we're right. trying to talk about tonight's topic now. Yeah, I, I would have to think about that, and, and I'm not sure what your exact you know, question might be. I'd have to think about that to give a proper response. Okay, over here. Do you know if NASA's ever made any? Uh, formal response to many of these details that you brought up, uh, or do they just try to ignore the No, solution? NASA spokespeople try to answer them, uh, answer these points. Um, but there are other um, people. There, there is a host, a host of, of NASA defenders and hoax debunkers who um, who uh, go, you know, tackle uh, this this issue um, probably more than NASA itself. And one. Um, one website, the best website by far, is called Clavius, okay, C-L-A-V-I-U-S, and and they, uh, it's a lengthy, um, Clavius dot uh, I think it's, I think it's not something else, I think it's something else, uh, Angel Fire, also related to that is, is the name Angel Fire, so if you, if you were to search Clavius Angel Fire, um, that's the best website that, that, um, tries to uh, uh, counter all these objections, all these issues. Okay. Jonathan, you take the last question, and we'll go to rebuttals. Oh, I have one more. We're going to be going to rebuttals soon, Charlie. Andy, very quick. Can I ask a very quick question? So this yeah, is like we start at 8 o'clock, we drag over, Charles. Very quick. So, Mr. Aranda, I have a question. So, so what do you think about Mars, those uh, rover uh, to the Mars? It's the in Mars rovers. rovers? Yeah, it's true. <laughs> they sent to the Mars? The they sent to the Mars? Um, I have seen um, photographs, alleged uh, Mars rover photographs. Yeah. With uh, walrus <laughs> skeletons in them with uh, uh, gopher-like um, little um, rodents with uh, what looks like petrified, petrify, not petrified, but uh, ship, shipwrecked wood, uh -huh. okay? Yeah. Um, and, and people have been looking at that very critically, and my uh, offhand assessment would be that those are totally fake. There's all the, the, the uh, indications of, of fakery there. And, and there, there, there's, there's, that's, a, that's a large topic, too. Like, how, there's there are rovers with solar panels that are sitting there on, on, on the surface of Mars for years, and they're not dust covered. 
And also, what kind of magic batteries do these things have to <laughs> drive, run around on the surface of, the, uh, of Mars for years? Hmm. Then they can't explain how, how they, there's, that's a lot to get into. But uh, my off, offhand um, opinion on that is that those rovers are, are fake. Okay. All right. Jonathan, okay, you get the last question. So this is during the late 60s, early 70s, when the Nixon administration is obviously engaged in massive secrecy and paranoia, et cetera. It's a major embarrassing thing to the establishment ruling class when he has to resign through you know, the burglary, the Watergate, etc. Now, so the Ford administration is not really elected. They're just they're in there because Nixon's got to be out because he's a criminal. The next administration is very knowledgeable in media manipulation and psyops operation through Hollywood. You might have commented this on the last program about this, but during the Reagan administration, a really famous film was called The Right Stuff. How does this incorporate into the psyops operation of Hollywood? Uh, the propaganda campaign under a president like Reagan, or obviously has an axe to grind to vindicate Nixon. Uh, well, I couldn't, I couldn't speak on that. And I apologize it's, if you already commented on this. No, 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 no. I, that, that's a little bit after Apollo, and I haven't watched. I haven't looked at the right that movie, the right stuff, and I'm not even. Mm -hmm. I couldn't comment too too much about that. And it's but, a great but, film. But I'll just it's say, a I'll say, I'll say, work of art. Okay, I'll say just generally that um, the U.S. government and the U.S. government-controlled media, corporate media, uh, have always been uh, keen to uh, vindicate and to try to bolster uh, the, the alleged reality of, of Apollo and the moon landings. And th that's one reason this is so important. Because out of all of the, all of the deceptions and false flags and hoax, hoaxes that are going on, okay, this, this one would be the one that is, number one, the very biggest of all, in my opinion. 9-11 uh, would be a close second. And secondly, uh, the, the one that they are going to hold on to no matter what. I mean, they, they are not going to admit something this vast. And yet, it is plain as the noonday sun that it's a bullshit lie. <laughs> OK. Give one our speaker one. a hand. Right. OK. All right. Thank you. Put together your thoughts and raise your hands. Who wants to give a rebuttal? All right. And, uh, the, the on deck circle like in baseball will be right up here along the rail. Hold, hold your hands up. There's number one right there. Jonathan's two. I'll be three. You're four. Tim's five, six. Charlie's seven. Okay. That's, okay. Everybody gets five minutes then. That's that's about five minutes for this. You don't have to take all five, but <laughs> let's give let's give Ted a hand again. Run more time. Yay. It was it was informative. <laughs> I think it may have been wrong, but he does give a good speech. Yes. Yeah, I think we can all agree we have uh, some food for debate tonight. Uh, my name is Doug Binkley. I have a BS in <laughs> physics from uh, the Illinois Institute of Technology, now sometimes called Illinois Tech. Uh, gives me a right to BS about this, I guess. So. <laughs> but uh, uh, last time I brought up a few comments. Uh, they're on the videotape from last time. Uh, I didn't realize this this um, uh, presentation was going to be all new stuff. Uh, a friend of mine, um, his name is Keith, was at the last one, and some of the photographic um, uh, arguments that Ted make, he, he blew out of the water, but I, I didn't write down what he said. Um, but uh, this was a whole different presentation, and um, the issue of NASA doctoring photos um, is something that has uh, cropped up over the years in a whole lot of different contexts. Uh, and um, these, uh, these images I wasn't aware of. It, it, it Ted makes a very good case about um, that uh, <laughs> airbrushing and uh, manipulating uh, photos. Uh, that's a very negative thing um, on NASA's part. Now, uh, people have uh, said, you know, oh gosh, they manipulated some of those photos from the rovers on, on Mars. and. Um, and uh, on uh, photos taken of uh, in, um, uh, different planets, uh, but especially Mars and you know the backside of the Moon, and there were in in this another context entirely that they uh, there were photos um, uh, revealing like structures that might have been um, built by aliens, for example, and that airbrushed out of them uh, in, in later photos, and and then there's a whole lot of things uh, that come up on. Um, and I watched this program called uh, NASA's Unexplained Files on the uh, Science Channel of all places, and, uh, and they have experts 
uh, analyzing uh, weird things that uh, have cropped up over the years. Um, uh, video from the space station and whatnot, one of them. It shows what looks like maybe it's an alien uh, dogfight, um, a laser beam or whatever. Well, it can't be a laser beam because it takes time to, for the um, uh, light to move. But uh, uh, there's so, called, so many weird things that are unexplained. Um, but um, yes, um, I've often wondered, yeah, because <laughs> it, it, had, it did occur to me over the time that you know, I'm always seeing kind of flat uh, horizons on, on most of these uh, photos from uh, the moon landings. And, um, and you wonder, because some of them are, uh, they should have more uh, differentiation. Um, so I have an open mind about this, uh, what Ted brought up here. Um, I have to admit that um, common sense tells you that if there was this kind of uh, propaganda thing where it was so important that the U.S. Uh, showed that they were so great in technology that they could beat the Russians. Um, they would have had a great excuse to stop um, after Apollo 11 and 12. And uh, because they had Apollo 13, they had the whole thing of like, well, there was an accident, um, and uh, we had to bring the astronauts back. But uh, look, look the accomplishment we made. But but now it's it's just too dangerous to send them, and so there would have been no reason to have an Apollo 14, 15. 16 and, and 17. Uh, there would have been no point. It was just a huge extra expense for no reason. So common sense kind of tells you that um, it, those missions probably happened. There's got to be some explanation. Now, if, if photos were airbrushed or whatever, NASA seems to have done that to cover up a lot of things. And um, there are more important things than even if the whole thing is a hoax that astronauts from the United States went to the moon. Uh, the Chinese are going to send astronauts. They are less concerned about human life than we are. And so they're going to try. They're going to get them there. And if this is a hoax, they'll get to the original landing sites, and they'll see, oh, well, nothing's there, no footprints. Were, and you, um, maybe no one will believe them. I mean, I don't know. Maybe everything is going to be fake news from now on, and everything can be manipulated on, on the Internet. Maybe any, everything can be airbrushed, Photoshop, whatever. Uh, it's a scary situation we're getting to where we can't agree on a certain set of facts. And, um, and that's the larger aspect of what we uh, been presented with tonight. We, we can't agree on a set of facts, evidently. And it's very disturbing. It's a shame. Uh, I don't have time because, as I pointed out uh, be at the beginning, uh, I'm going to marches. I'm constantly concerned with the Trump and fascist regime and trying to save our democracy in whatever small way that I can contribute to that. And um, the larger aspect um, of the um, um, whether you know there are there have been aliens uh, around our planet visiting our planet, whether there's evidence of that that's been covered up, um, whether or not we actually physically landed on the moon, isn't as big an issue as these other greater issues which we should concentrate on. And that I kind of wish Ted would would put his um, uh, efforts toward. And I'm very disturbed. But Ted mentioned something like he thought that the Parkland uh, massacre was some kind of a, a conspiracy theory. I really, I really hope that he doesn't go that way. Thank you. All right. Okay, Jonathan. Yeah, they. This guy's uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ted. As usual, uh, very, very uh, interesting and thought provoking presentation. Oh. Uh, I want to preface uh, what I say tonight in my rebuttal uh, that the uh, scientists and the researchers and the engineers and the specialists of uh, NASA are outstanding professionals. They're genuinely committed to improving humanity's understanding of uh, Earth and the universe, and this does not reflect on uh, them as human beings or as workers, what I'm about to say. Uh, I do 
I think it's very interesting that that fork in the road in the late 60s, early 70s, uh, when the Vietnam War was raging and Nixon was so paranoid that uh, peaceful democratic protests uh, was getting out of hand because that's just so unacceptable to people like Kissinger and Nixon and folks like that, that uh, they had to get their getaway airplanes and their getaway ships ready and it appears possibly, this is speculation, but their getaway rockets and space shuttles. Uh, they were scared of we the people when we showed up in mass peacefully and democratically like we did again today. And I say we, I wasn't there, but I was there in spirit. Uh, to say it doesn't have to be like this. We can have a completely radically different world. The technology uh, from this research no matter what we agree or disagree on what happened as a result of this technology, should be used to create a better world. We all need wind turbines. We all need solar panels. We all need high-speed rail. We all need improved technology which makes independent living programs and services for people with disabilities more affordable and more available now more than ever. The problem is, in this country, is that we don't have just one country. We have this other country that pretends to be our friend. It's called the military industrial complex. We also have this other country, kind of a rogue country that doesn't need to recognize international law called Wall Street. And we have this other country that doesn't recognize domestic or international law called the fossil fuel industry. And another one called the surveillance industrial complex. And then there's the real country, we the people. And that's the country I want to focus on uh, thanking those scientists and those researchers and those engineers and those specialists. Because uh, they don't want to lose their job. And they don't want to be uh, labeled uh, persona non grata in this field where there is a lot of exciting breakthroughs happening, like the higgs boson particle at CERN, where my uh, late father, Henry Barton, used to work at CERN in Switzerland. So uh, I'm trying to be very, very diplomatic in how I, I thank the scientists for their research and hard work and sacrifice, but at the same time, the people who co-opt that research uh, who are grandstanding because they want to be uh, Secretary of States and Presidents and Vice Presidents and Supreme Court Justices and Senators and Reps, <laughs> Um, they're really, really obstructing what could be the most important uh, discoveries in history. Some of the films that I've seen that make me think about this topic more with reflection is, maybe you'll remember from 1997, this great film with Jodie Foster and Matthew McConaughey called Contact. Yeah, yeah. Where the exact topic that, that you're presenting this evening is uh, beautifully presented in that she testifies before uh, the committee where they doubt that she actually went. She's saying she did go. And it's alluding to how much Hollywood is a strong component of why these events have such an emotionally charged impact on all of us and how the media works that in different ways to justify the legitimacy of certain administrations, ruling class, et cetera, et cetera. Another one that I really love, uh, I, I know a lot of you do too, is Douglas Adams' The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Um, don't panic. So whatever the conclusion eventually comes out, if a whistleblower does come out, uh, just don't panic about it. We can do this. We can handle this. We're human beings. Uh, this is paraphrased version of Man of La Mancha. It's called Masses of La Mancha. To dream the impossible dream, to fight the unbeatable foe, to bear with unbearable sorrow, to run where the brave dare not go, to right the unrightable wrong, to love pure and chaste from afar, to try when our arms are too weary, to reach the unreachable star. This is our quest to follow that star, no matter how hopeless, no matter how far. To fight for the right without question or pause, to be willing to march into hell for a heavenly cause. And we know if we only be true to this glorious quest that our hearts will lie peaceful and calm when we're laid to our rest. And the world will be better for this that we the people scorned covered with scars 
still strove with our last ounce of courage to reach the unreachable star. Thank you, Ted. Uh, I may have a little different take on this. Uh, it's after listening to Ted's presentation, um, what he says makes a lot of sense in that uh, I've been studying uh, since 1983 censored news, blacked out subjects, and I've never run across any publication uh, specifically that talks about this hoax, and this would be the biggest hoax. But I think it might be true for the, the following reasons. Hum uh, humanity has been moving forward. We've been making progress steadily, and uh, ships captains flying across, uh, sailing across the oceans for hundreds of years, once they had big ships and they could cross the oceans. Uh, in the log books of uh, captains, you can go back hundreds of years, they report uh, pinwheels of light uh, moving through the water slowly and moving under the ship and moving off. When they see them at night, they're, they're just considered that maybe it was a giant octopus, it was iridescent or something. But uh, as we uh, got to be, uh, you know, with ocean liners and faster travel, uh, these ship's captains are reporting seeing things that come up near the ship out in the middle of nowhere where, where it's 10 to 20,000 feet deep in the water. Initially, it looks like a whale coming up until it comes up out of the water and takes a slow lap around the ship and flies off at 3,000 miles an hour. So uh, they've been reporting these things, and the media has been telling people they've been seeing swamp gas out in the middle of the ocean for all these years until recently we've been carrying cell phone cameras. The Pope put out a statement a few years back, it was four or five years or something, saying it's okay for God, uh, for Catholics, devout people to accept that God created other races. The reason we know that is because you're whipping out your cell phone cameras and filming it up close and personal when they're landing and walking around and mingling with, mingling with the people. Uh, one guy took his film into Gulf Breeze, Florida, the sheriff's office, and says, we've been getting these sleep. conspiracy denier, but I would respectfully disagree with the presenter tonight. Um, when 9-11 happened, uh, Bush claimed that they were out for our freedoms, and then he proceeded to act by taking away our freedoms. Uh, very angry about that. And one of the heroes of 9-11 is a gentleman named Snowden. Who, uh, who very embarrassingly to the CIA and the whole um, uh, community of, uh, of, of people in the federal government uh, of how much they're taking away from our freedoms. And I, I'm not going to deny that there are things happening that uh, are really anti-democratic in, uh, in the government, but I do respectfully disagree with the Apollo uh, uh, theory. Uh, so I'm going to go through some points here. Um, uh, the rooster tail thing. And my understanding is that rooster tails, that that's the sand kicking up from the back wheel of the uh, car on the, the little lunar rover can't happen in vacuum. Um, oversimplification, but uh, you know, aeronautical engineers have to deal with four basic measurements when they're dealing with uh, designing aircraft. Uh, the force moving forward is thrust. It's counteracted by the um, by the air, which is creating friction. So it's fighting the thrust, and then you've got lift that's pushing something up, and that's being counteracted by gravity. It's pure math. It doesn't matter if there's a vacuum. If there's a vacuum, it just means that there's no drag of that's counteracting the thrust. So I maybe I un, maybe I heard the argument wrong, but. As I heard it, it didn't make any sense to me. Um, something that was said the last time he spoke was the flag was fluttering. Uh, I, I started, I actually looked into this, um, and I loved the Wikipedia entry on this hoax. 
Um, and on there, it talks about the flag fluttering when there shouldn't be any wind on the moon. And you see a photo of the astronaut standing next to the flag and it has waves in it. And then it's showing a whole series of photographs. The folds in the flag never change. So NASA's story is, well, look, we send the flag up there. It's folded. So when you pull it out and you put it on the pole, it's got these bends in it. And you can see the series of photos where the guy's standing next to it and the guy is moving, but the folds never change in the flag. So it makes total sense to me. Um, the, uh, uh, there's, uh, there were some complaints about how astronauts move on the surface of the moon, that uh, uh, they're not jumping high enough. Uh, I don't think they're there to try to set records for jumping. Um, the, the, you have to understand that they can't fall down and then call somebody for help, okay? If they fall down, everything they're wearing, the suit, the seals, the glass, the air conditioner, because they have to have an air conditioner because it's so friggin' hot, the sun, the, the oxygen, anything busts, breaks, or rips, they're dead. They're trained to not move around. And I've, and I've read this, where Armstrong, when he jumped on the moon, he actually missed a step. He was so excited, he, he hopped down to the moon's lunar surface when he first walked. And NASA chewed him out. They're like, that's against protocol. If you had fallen, you could have, you could have died. So, they're in this crazy, weird environment that nobody can really train you for. Six gravity, weird equipment, totally off balance. If even a rock, if, you're, if there's dust mixed with rocks <laughs> in the dust, boulders, they can trip on that. So they have to be really careful. They're not going to be setting records for jumping. Um, okay. Mountains. Right? There's this claim that they went to the mountain and they couldn't find it. Well, that assumes one thing, that NASA came up with this plan. They announced that they were going to the crater when they didn't have any plan for documenting that they went for the to the crater. That sounds like an absolutely nutty plan to deceive the American public. To announce they're going to a crater and then go, oh, you know, we didn't think about this, but we need some document. Oh, we can't find the documentation. We'll just fake it. No, I, it sounds more likely to me that they're on a, a surface they've never been before, and they just got disoriented. I've been disoriented, and I've never even been close to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> um, Gus Grissom um, was on Apollo 1. Him and two other astronauts died on Apollo 1. These are not Volkswagens. They're not spitting them out of the factory. They're, these are experimental aircraft. They're experimental. Even the space shuttles. Decades later, we lost two space shuttles. This is not a safe activity. And saying and claim, I, I understand that I can I can understand the passion of the argument, but to come out and claim that NASA assassinated three astronauts to cover their tracks without any evidence, I would I would say is irresponsible. And then finally, I would say that uh, with all the people in NASA, all the engineers across the country, at the Houston in Houston in uh, Cape Canaveral, for all of them. To not say anything is going against the American tradition of whistleblowing. And we've all seen people like Snowden who will sacrifice their lives because they feel <coughs> it's the right thing to do as a career. It just doesn't seem possible that that massive operation wouldn't result in a whistleblower. That's my, my thing. Thanks. Okay, okay, okay. Can anybody, can I, any, anybody else? Yeah, 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 he's. Okay, okay, I want to read about that. Yeah, go, go first. You want, is it, sure, you're all right? Sure, yeah. is it okay? All right, all right, excuse me. All right, okay, 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 sorry. Listen, uh, all I wanted to say, 
is that if Edward Snowden had really been willing to sacrifice his life, he would have gone to prison instead of fleeing the country. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Man, you had five minutes. He yeah, made the point for us. If you speak out on certain things, you get killed. Kennedy got oh, killed. Or yeah. got oh, killed. Yeah. A bunch of people got killed that are higher ranking than astronauts. Yeah. Okay? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, my name is uh, Li Ping Yuan. Uh, I haven't seen you for a while. So I'm glad to be here and uh, it was a great talk. Uh, thank you. Uh, when I saw the moon landing I, when I was a teenager, uh, that's uh, a really big event uh, at that time in Taiwan. Uh, because uh, we really have a TV, <laughs> but uh, at that time uh, they have a TV. Uh, I'm not sure it's a real time or a live or not, uh, but uh, uh, broadcast in Taiwan. So everybody is uh, was excited, uh, and uh, I just went to my uh, relative's house and uh, watched uh, the whole thing. Uh, since then, I, I saw that it's certainly it's a truth. Uh, I had I had never thought about it, so I came here and think, uh, what can be the argument against this? But uh, after Ted's uh, talk, I think uh, uh, there are some certain uh, scientific uh, uh, facts or uh, points can be argued uh, against uh, this, this uh, Apollo mission. Although, as a whole, I don't, uh, uh, I don't think this is a, a, a big lie, but uh, certainly there are, there are some things uh, scientifically uh, conflict to each other. Uh, but I think that's a, a, a very, uh, to me, uh, regardless the political or some other arguments, uh, just scientifically, this is a very great uh, uh, knowledge and the study, and uh, we should uh, really look at the, the truth and uh, to dig deeper, uh, deeper to, to see that. And uh, eventually it will come out whether it is true or not, because uh, there are other countries China or maybe later Russia and India, they all uh, try to launch uh, rockets and uh, to circul cir circulate the, the moon, maybe the landing also. So all of this will come out uh, in the near future. So let's uh, see that. And uh, I also agree with uh, the previous uh, uh, rebuttal that uh, uh, there are some facts about the uh, uh, flag waving and uh, then uh, uh, I'm not sure about the, the, the tail, uh, but uh, uh, that's uh, something worth to study. Thank you. All right, let's thank our speaker. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. All right. Very good. You got a lot to talk about here. I see some of you uh, have been taken in by this stuff. Um, I know it's a pattern here. And, uh, Do you now? You, you you take a bunch of photographs and then you look at them all and then you you explain what happened. And the same thing with the 9-11 people. They took uh, 2,500 photos and looked at them, and then they explained uh, what happened. I was thinking about this. What if I had a collection of photographs of World War II with no explanation or understanding that there had been? What explanation would I give to those photographs? And there seems to be a flaw in your process. Uh, your cases aren't ready to go to court. Um, you say there's a crime committed, but amazingly enough, in all these conspiracies you have not one criminal. They seemingly are done without by nobody. You can't produce one individual. Um, take the situation of shooting rockets. You, you, you get rockets, you had an agency of the government with several thousand people. <coughs> Probably five to ten. I think how many? I think there has been as many the figures of 200,000 people involved in the, in the moon situation. 
each of them somehow was committed to silence. Uh, there's no deathbed confessions in a 50-year period. Uh, this involves not only people shooting the rockets, all the subcontractors, all the astronomers around the world, um, uh, aeronautical engineers. Uh, where's the aeronautical engineers for truth on this one? Um, what about the, the military personnel who were in, I guess they had pretend retrieval in the ocean. I guess they were participants as well. So we've got the military as well. So uh, that's quite a few, a lot of people there to, to keep quiet here. Um, that's what I mean. The, and then you take a photo. Where's the before and after photos? Um, like somebody alluded to earlier, um, I've been dealing in photography for years. Um, getting the horizon where you want. I, I'm going, what is all of this about? To the nth degree, it's the horizon, it's not a complex topic. These guys are using cameras on their chest, by the way, because you don't, they don't use those cameras like we have. Uh, these are mounted on their, their uniforms. And I'm going, well, they took some photos. The other thing is, I lived many years in the country as a city boy and went to the country. And I can tell you, living in rolling hills, that you have to understand that you don't see horizons. And if you go down, look down. Uh, I was looking for the case I was hitting. I went to see the farmer on his tractor. I actually drove completely around him and did not see him because he was down in the spot. Now, this is not large areas. That's what I mean. I went twice. And I said, he is not there. Later on, I asked him, where were you? He said, in the south section four. That's what I mean. He, this is, so I don't know what you were trying to establish by this Hills theory of the horizon. Uh, the energy, the energy is deadly to human beings, but it has no effect on other satellites that we've sent out there. But I guess those perhaps are all fake instruments as well. But they seem to have no damaging effect negative effect upon the sensitive electronics of the other uh, Voyager and other such uh, satellites, uh, Hubble telescopes uh, that we sent up there. Um, first of all, uh, where, where's the leaks? Where's the leaks? There's got to be a leak in here. This, this is, this, this, to say that They've achieved, or they, the dark forces, who's in charge of this thing, <laughs> has been able for 50 years to preclude any leaks from happening when they're trying, I, this is not going to happen. That you're not going to have that much precision. Uh, by the way, uh, he's the one guy hit on it too. All kinds of people got killed in that space program. I even attended a lecture. <coughs> about the hazards of it. There are about a dozen guys who got killed in various ways. Uh, so there are, there are all sorts of things going on there. It was experimental technology. But where are the leaks in all this? Nobody, no one, everyone is perfectly disciplined. Out of all the thousands of these people, somehow they are, they, I guess it's the fear, but you have not, not one person you can make a lot of money. You know how much money you can make on a, like a good book? <laughs> you know, you can clean up pretty good on this. Now look at, look at the trouble that Trump is having with leaks. He's got them all over. He's got so many. He's like the Dutch boy here, you know. He's got girls coming out of every, you know. But you can't come up with one. In his own little world, he's got oh, dozens. But you've got 200,000 people, and you have now one. Anyhow, thank you very much. Come again. We're going to have we're going to have another conspirator, Ellen's coming back. She claimed that there was an old Nazi guy running the world last time. She was here. Uh, all right, thank you. All right, I'm going to. The old German guy was running the world. <laughs> 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 Do you have a German Nazi running the country right now? <laughs>
<laughs> I look at these guys believing in conspiracy theories, and then I look at myself, maybe I'm a little bit like them myself. After all, tomorrow morning, I'm going to be headed to Springbrook Community Church. I'm going to believe in a uh, guy who rose from the dead over 2,000 years ago. I believe in a physical <coughs> resurrection. And I believe that he's going to be, uh, that he changes lives. You know, and where's my evidence? I believe I have plenty, particularly in the changed lives of people that accept them inside their hearts and minds actually do see changed lives over time. But if I was to take a quick and honest look, you know, there is a lot of evidence out there, but if you're not of my persuasion, I can definitely see what you think. I'm a little nuts. <laughs> For I'm not the guy totally off base. And Christianity has its own arguments for it. Uh, my mind is not your mind. Think of the, don't think of things of the world, but think of the things of God. Yeah, I believe it very strongly. I'm a committed Christian. Whether you think it's a, th whether you think it's a conspiracy theory or not, I don't. But I will want to say this: that you did do a good presentation tonight. I don't believe it, but <laughs> you did do a good presentation. Thank you. <laughs> Try to contain your enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, what's your name, sir? David. David. Oh. Let me start with uh, <coughs> David's issues. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I didn't make a, and, uh, some, somebody else made an uh, issue of this too. I didn't make a case about the flag fluttering. And that, wasn't, uh, that was the last time an answer to a question. Right. I did see film several uh, seconds or half a minute or whatever it was long not just st still photographs of a flag that looked like uh, it was fluttering in the breeze but i'm not going to argue that case um, there are things that there are a lot of individual points that uh the the, the uh, moon hoax investigators dwell on that i more or less stay away from i have um, more solid evidence i believe um <clears throat> now you did say that uh, these people were trying to set records jumping. Well, actually, uh, I didn't show you all the all the jumps that they did, but sometimes they were clearly trying to impress us, and none of their jumps was extraordinary. Okay, uh, and as for as for their jumping um, or, or trying to not jump very high because they're afraid of being falling down, they were actually very. When you look at a whole lot of film of, of these guys running around, they were very careless and they fell a lot. And it, apparently, one of the reasons that they fell so much. They were, they were literally running around like kids uh, on the moon, by the way. They weren't, they weren't act, acting for all, for all, as far as we could see, they weren't acting very cautiously at all. And they fell many times, uh, which they, as you're right, they should have tried to avoid, but they actually didn't seem to. And one reason uh, seems to have been that they, uh, they were probably lifted by wires to, to uh, enhance the, 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 the look oh, of, 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 of being suspended. Okay. That, that's something that I didn't get into here, but I, I, I did see the evidence. Uh, and uh, because of that, uh, they, they didn't have good footing. And you can see yeah. in, in, the, in the film uh, that they were like, spinning their, 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 their feet okay, in a weird way. They would, they would be explained by being uh, hanging from wires like actors. They're like actors hanging from wires. Yeah. Um, like Mary Martin. Yeah. Okay, uh, you also said uh, something about um, the, the, you know, the moon or exploration or, or space exploration not being a safe activity. It certainly isn't real uh, space exploration, and that's exactly why uh, you have 14 dead shuttle astronauts. Okay? Those, for, as far as I can tell, are real astronauts, and they're going up in space and it's dangerous, and things, and things go wrong. Uh, for, all, for all practical purposes, except for that little glitch with Apollo 13, nothing went wrong in all of these missions, nine missions to the moon. They had never landed uh, the lunar module uh, either, uh, of course not on the moon, not even on the Earth. The first test was on the moon, okay? Uh, it, it was magical uh, what they presented us with, okay? Uh, it was fake in, 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 in so many ways. Uh, let me go on to uh, <clears throat> Doug's uh, points. Um, Doug uh, made some very good points about how everything uh, can be, nowadays, almost literally anything can be manipulated. 
because the technology has, has, has improved so much, the, the, uh, the computer animation technology. So some of these people who are, have been critical of, of the Apollo program have, have made the um, inference that uh, now that they were moving on to going to Mars, okay, and they, they, they're going to try to you know, pick our pockets for a few trillion dollars to go to Mars, they'll be able to sell that even better now to the point that we won't be able to tell what's real or not. That's a very good point that you made. Um, you, you know, that you can make people nowadays with animation that are that you can't tell whether they're real or not, uh, their facial, you know, facial features, or whatever. So we're in very serious trouble if we don't if we can't establish the facts. That's why it's important. That's one reason that it's important to go back to historical events like this, where the technology wasn't so advanced, and you can see the fakery time and time again. In, 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 in many, many, many different ways. Uh, let me also uh, get to Parkland, okay, since you know, I can say anything I, I want, um, and, and you did bring it up. We have to get to the reality of these things, and you have to investigate, okay? Anybody, I would venture to say, anybody who, who, is, not, who is mentally competent, not, not necessarily a Rhodes Scholar. Anybody who is, is the least mentally competent and, 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 and objective in, at, at all can see that Parkland was a phony, baloney, bullshit thing. They show people who are, like this one girl that I have in mind, I don't know her name, offhand. She says she was shot four times. They show a picture of her legs, okay? What? They show a picture of her bare legs. She said, and she, they show us the gunshot. She's sitting, sitting there standing. She has band-aids. Band-aids. Band-aids over uh, AF, uh, what is AR-15 uh, gunshot wounds. Okay, um, she, 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 they show us uh, she has a black eye, literally a black eye. Okay, and you can see that it's painted on. Okay, that's just one example out of many. Uh, they're, they're laughing. They're laughing. The, the kids that were supposedly shot are literally. Uh, you can see them in group photos, you know, cheering and I mean, and then look, you just look into it. They count on you not looking into it. They count, for these uh, um, uh, false flags and hoax and hoaxes, they count on you uh, taking their word for it. Oh, well, they wouldn't do that. I, who's going to fake that? I mean, that's sick. Yeah, it is sick. It's sick, of, it's sick of them. The department did this? Huh? This is the drama department of the the, the, These guys, uh, half these uh, uh, quote unquote spokespeople are uh, actors and uh, people are starting to see that some of them are too old to be in high school. They weren't even at Parkland. So uh, the point I'm making here is very simple because this isn't about Parkland. <clears throat> but you have to look into these things critically. You can't just uh, assume that uh, these officials, these governments, these the media liars, okay, they should be called the, the, the main, main, mainstream lying media, okay? You can't assume that they're going to tell you anything true. They lie left and right, up and down, about all kinds of things, the biggest lies you can imagine. So um, that's about what I have to say. You have to look, uh, think critically, analytically, scientifically, and, and you don't take anything for granted about what these monsters uh, would or couldn't or, or shouldn't do, uh, no, uh, they can do anything. Thanks. Let them gavel us out. Okay, uh, thanks Ted for a presentation and I would like to say one thing that he just uh, said. You have to think critically and start with what we teach seventh graders is square one facts. Uh, just start with a fact that is non-debatable and go from there and just look at it critically with common sense. All you need is a seventh grade education and a 30 percent open mind. 30 over 7 and you can understand a lot of the stuff that we don't normally look at. So anyway, thank you all for coming to the college. We are adjourned for tonight. We'll see you next week.